Yep. So there we are. As you can see, you can see. Well, I was saying earlier on the importance of plenty of fines in your, your MOT type one. Look at that. Look, that's gonna really bind together really well. I'm not sure what quarry this came from, but there's plenty of the big stuff as well. You've got to make sure that what you don't want doing is, is the big lumpy parts uh, in, in the top, the bigger part of the stone, because that's when you get that separation. This is how you want it. Look at that. That looks absolutely perfect. We can use that stone somewhere else, like you know. But if you look at that, so we've compacted this with a machine, we've run up and down with the compactor plate, and the ultimate word, the most important word that you need to use when you're doing compaction is severe. It needs a severe compaction. You can never compact enough. If you go left and right, up and down, that diagonals, you just keep passing over until you see your compactor plate start bouncing and you know that you've got it right. So let's get on after the talking. Hi, I'm John Roberts from Greentop Landscapes and Design. Today we're going to be installing a driveway using the Tobermore Tegler Trio in Charco. Probably the most important part about any driveway installation is the sub base. It's essential when putting your sub base in that you use an MOT Type 1. Make sure there's plenty of fines in there as well. As I said, the existing driveway was a tarmac drive and it's been in here for over 15 years. There was no evidence of any tracking or undulations. That's when you see the dips in your drive from the wheels of your car. It's important that in most driveway installations, once you've dug out all your spoil, that's all the soil that you're taking away, and you get down to your final dig, being your sub your substrate, it's important to introduce a geotextile underlay. Geotextile underlays come in many forms. One of the most popular ones out there is a brand called Taram. You've got to make sure that you're using the right spec for your driveway installation. We're at that crucial stage now where we've got our sub base in place. We've gone over it several times, but we're just getting the final level. It's so important that each level of your driveway installation from your substrate being the dig to your sub base to your laying course needs to be exactly straight and level. No undulations, because what will happen in that situation, your type one, for example, will start to unbind and start moving around. Spend a little bit of time on preparation. It's key to a good installation. Tip when you're putting in your sub pace 
when you walk over there after compaction and if you've got some soft pockets you need to take them out it's just no good at all eventually it's going to start moving around it needs to be consolidated <laughs> Well here I just want to show you the paving of choice. This is the Tobemore Tegler Trio. Uh, it comes in three different sizes. Got the large, the small and the intermediate. You need to follow the full instruction guide with Tobemore on how to install this block. Tobemore have a very unique way of manufacturing their blocks. And to avoid any effervescence in the block, they steam cure all their blocks. And before they wrap their blocks in the plastic, do, they'll leave them for 24 hours, allowing the blocks to cure under their own steam. Well, our sub base is finally compacted. I think we've given it enough now. Now it's time to get our stone dust out so we can start laying our blocks. So, let me explain this now. What we need, eventually, after compaction, we want our block up for our driveway at the same height as the patio after compaction, okay? And because of the moisture of the stone dust, we have to accommodate that by leveling and compacting as we go to achieve the correct height. Well, as you can see, we're starting to get our six mil to dust in position and we're dropping it just that little bit lower than our finish level. In this case, our finish level is the patio and we've got the linear drainage system on the side of the house here. So we've got to get it roughly in position. We're going to compact it, we're going to screed it and then we're going to make it up to the correct height finally once we've done that. So let's get on with it. Well, there you are we're getting the six mils of dust in position okay what we don't want is any more than 50 mil compacted 
laying bed in this position. If you're laying deeper than 50 mil, it's not good. You need to make up with your MOT type one. So what we're doing here, the, the first initial rake off, we're just dropping it a little bit lower than our linear drainage system on the right hand side and the patio. Then we'll compact it with a compactor plate. And then what we'll do, we'll check the yites, finally ensuring that when we do our final compaction, it will bed down to the right height. Right, what I've done there to show you is that if you look here now, one second. So the block represents 50 mil, okay? As I said to you, that you don't want your bedding course to be any more than 50 mil when it's finely compacted. If we to drop this onto the sub base now, and we look at that, that's about 20 mil higher. Stone six mil to dust is about 20 mil higher than your block. So when we compact that now, we hopefully will get it at the right height. So you want to be around no more than 50, 60 mil, somewhere around there. Any more is not good. Well, we've got a new line and uh, it's so important when you're working and installing any paving system that you use a string line. Hi, right here we are. Just to let you know, I have got knee pads in so I'm okay on my knees. So what we're doing here, if you want to have a look from this angle now, Ryan, yeah. I'm just going over with the level. We've got a string line on that side, okay? And what we're doing, we're just roughing out, okay? We're just roughing out, ready for our final screed. What we're going to be doing on this side, we're going to be placing a screed rail under that line, and we're going to be checking the heights of that. So we've got something to pull off on top of the screed rail. And on this side, in this situation, tomorrow, you'll be able to see how we cut a rebate out out of some timber and we're able to drag along the top of the linear drainage system and, and you've got two fixed points that you can reduce the level if required or add more product again if required and what we do you'll see tomorrow and we float off the surface as we we come back so there you go just a tip a tip is so important that even if you've got some product some stone dust six mil to dust on the ground and you're not going to you're not going to be laying on it today it's so important that you give it a compact now tonight because if it did rain it's gone nice and solid and then you can sort it out tomorrow as you can see it's starting to rain now and we don't want to compromise that uh, surface in any shape or form so what we've done, we've compacted it, and that's just roughly at the moment. We're roughly at the height where we need to be, but tomorrow we need the screed rail and the screed bar. We're going to go over and get it to the correct height. Good morning, uh, Ryan and I are heading back to the driveway, the Tomo driveway installation, and there is inclement weather conditions, but we are going to turn up this morning. The, the good thing, the positive thing is that yesterday we compacted and consolidated our stone to dust, our six mil stone to dust on the driveway. So if we do have a break in, in the weather, it's not going to be affected because of the rain now. So what we'll be able to do, there's a possibility we'll be able to screed off, but we are gonna get a little wet. Good morning. Um, we're back on the project this morning. And what I wanted to show you was how we have left the, the stone dust, okay? The six mil to dust. And if you look at it, there's no soft pockets. It's absolute solid. We've, as I said yesterday, we've roughly laid it out. We've compacted it because we compacted it yesterday. 
because there was rain coming in. But if you look at it now, it's absolutely solid. It's not gonna go anywhere at all. And now we can start screeding. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a perfectly wooden straight edge. Now we're gonna use this to drag off the stone dust for the correct height. Now you can use a steel, you can use a, a level. There are lots of other uh, screeding rails that you can actually use for that. Um, but this here now, sometimes we use a, a, a round bar, okay? And uh, sometimes they can be a little bit expensive. So in this case, last night, we purchased this one from B&Q and it's solid. It's, it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna bow. And I think this was uh, about 14 pound. It's three meters long. Now this is going to be placed underneath the string line. We know the string line represents our finished level. So we place this underneath the string line, okay? And we measure down from the string line to the top of rail, which will give us the drop for our block. Well, this is our straight edge now, what we're gonna use now to screed off across the top of the bar the, the six mil to dust. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a 45 mil rebate out of here. And the reason I'm using a 45, that will always depend on the moisture content of the product that you're actually using. And yesterday we've given this quite a severe compaction. And so we're gonna have an upstand of the block above the linear drainage system of five mil. There are other tools out there like probs, probs tools, do a selection of screed bars, screed rails, and um, they're good and they work. But sometimes you need to improvise. And like I said, this is a perfectly adequate straight edge for this installation. It'd be beneficial to change, if you are using wood in the future, just to change it for each job. Okay, so we've got the, the screed rail in place now. We're gonna get it underneath the line, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna scrape back the stone dust and then we're gonna measure down at several points the 45 mil that we're looking for.
So we've got the rail in place now. We've got it at the exact height at several points along there. I think we've measured in, in five areas and we've got 45 mil exactly. We want this drive to look absolutely perfect. Now you can see where it's being supported there, but now we need to support it under the bar where there's no stone dust now to ensure that when we screed off, that it's not gonna drop down and taking it lower than what we need to be. One thing that I should add, and just uh, give you some uh, a real a top tip, that when you're shoot, choosing your, your bedding layer, you've got to make sure that you use uh, either a real good sharp sand or a six mil uh, limestone to dust, which basically it will bind together, it'll maintain its integrity, but it also has a porosity value. Now, all too often you'll see in some situations people using sand that is basically building sand. Building sand isn't the right product to use. It doesn't allow the water to run through and it will jellify and start moving around. Your blocks will start moving around as well. Unlike when you have a very sharp sand. Now, the fact is that across the country, a lot of places uh, haven't got the sharp sand like they used to have years ago because of the dredging rights and what's been going on. And what they do, they tend to mix a recycled product, okay, a byproduct and they put building sand as well they mix it together hoping that it's going to be it has that real porosity value and basically it doesn't so you've got to make sure you use the right product to bed your blocks on Okay, one of the things that we never mentioned at the start is some of the tools that you may need for your driveway installation. What I want to try and do now is run through a few basic tools that you need for your driveway installation. So what we've got here, it's important that you get a wheelbarrow. We've got a wooden straight edge. It's cheap, but it works, it's effective. But remember, change it from one job to another job if you have to. We've got a set square. We've got a pencil, which is important couple of brick trowels here. We've got a lump hammer and probably one of the most important things about any installation, any paving, string lines and pins are imperative to achieve the final level. We've got a plastic float so you can smooth off your stone dust when you're screeding off. Tape measure, accurate again. We've got a rake, got a spirit level and a shovel. And remember, you're gonna need a compactor plate, but you can hire one of those from your local IS center. Okay, we screeded the full length of the bar nearly now, but we are gonna go and repeat the process again, and hopefully then we'll achieve the perfect height. As you can see now, we've extended our bar through to our pin and you can still see, see it's been left in the previous screeded area. So what we've got to do, we've pulled it down to the line now. I'll just check that and we have nearly got 45, but we've got a bit of a hump here in the middle. So we just check this one here. Now else, we've got to go down a little bit there. 45, 45, and 45. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, well, here we are. We've approached the end now, and it's at this point when we've got different levels. If you look at the, the pin curb on this side, it drops, drops quite dramatically. The same as the pin curb there. They, they haven't even put it exactly straight, and uh, <laughs> this is where you have to start using your imagination about the levers a little bit. But if you look at that, we're almost there, almost there, 99% there, but we have to be a little bit more creative in the respect. We've got to make sure that when the paving sits on that, it's going to reflect what we're looking at now, okay? Each level has got to look right. You just can't take it for granted, but you can see it almost molds itself round. So there's no rules of this. you just got to just bite the bit and get on with it, I suppose. Well, there we are we've got the first row in we're just going to straighten that up and make sure that they're at the correct height and then you'll be able to see it unfold Well, there we are. We're checking the row every two or three rows. We're checking to make sure that it's running straight. But you can see the rain sort of coming down because the blocks are literally going darker as uh, this video goes on. But it's coming together nicely. see when you spend some time it just seems as if the preparation was going on for some time but now uh, you can see the value of it everything's nice and flat there's no undulations in the paving once we give it that final compaction it's all going to come out good and if there are any little rises in places we can iron, iron it out with a plate compactor the most important thing is that you follow the Tobermore guideline on their laying pattern. But number one rule, what you don't want on every row, you don't want a straight joint going on to the next, the next row because it just doesn't, straight joints just don't look good at all. Let's push on. Well, good morning from sunny Wales. Uh, it's almost like a Barbados here this morning. There we are. This is the Tobermore Tegular Trio in Charco, and it meets the new porcelain patch up there. Very modern, contemporary in colour. It's uh, this Charco, and if you come and have a look at the picture frame over here of the porcelain, there we are. Look at that, an absolute fantastic choice in colour. Well, welcome back. We're carrying on with this installation of this driveway. And uh, yesterday, unfortunately, we couldn't bring you much footage simply because of the inclement weather conditions. But come and have a look. 
Well, as you see, all the drive is completed in laying. Now we're reaching that point now where we've got to start doing the cutting. Well, as you can see, we're at the threshold of the entry to the client's property here. And it's a very difficult entry because the pin curves are at different levels. We've got a quite a steep incline to the highway here. As you can see, you can see the existing pin curbs to the highway and the threshold of, of the property. But we started the cutting and you can see it's really nice and neat. As you can see, what we've got here now, we have to do a cut and this is how I will do, do the cut in this situation. We lay our block over. So we've got one cut going right the way through and it sits in the pin curb. And then what I do is I use this float. I look down from above. I line it up with my previous cut and mark along with one of these markers. The difficult thing when you're installing a driveway on an incline is that the fact is that when you start coming down the drive, the blocks start to fall away. So you've got to make sure that you keep each row nice and tight as you lay and checking each one as you go to ensure that you don't start creating any voids or any gaps during the process of the driveway installation. Well, installing driveways is a simple process, but it's so important that you hit the stages at the right time. And over the last couple of days, we've had inclement weather conditions and hopefully touch wood, it's blowing over today. So we're able to get on and put our curb sets along this part of the drive. Okay, well, we've overlaid now our driveway wider than it needs to be. But what we've done, we've, give, we've marked from the house down there and a mark from the house up here, making an exact parallel line. We've used the string line and then we've scored along the marks using a level. Now, we're at that point now. We've cut our bricks all the way through. We've overlaid, we've got a string line through. We've marked at given points and then we use the straight edge to mark on those points so we have a nice parallel cut with the property. What we've done now, we've set up our curbs in place with a string line from A to B. Now we can start bedding the edge restraints in those curbs to make sure that the driveway may retain integrity. This is our curbstone. We've got a string line running through, and what we're doing, the string line will ensure that we're heading in the correct height from A to B. The other thing that we're actually checking, which is interesting, a lot of people won't use this because they just work to the line, but what we're actually doing, we're putting the bolt level on top, checking that it's level on top, but we're also making sure that it's vertical as well. And you will have sometimes the odd discrepancy in the side of the block, like there is one there through the manufacturing process, which is very little, but that is absolutely plum at this point. Just got to check as you go in every two or three or every one, whatever you feel is necessary, but we are working to the correct size.